In this series, I address your questions about self-harm. It's a tricky topic, but I want us to talk more about it. If I haven't answered your question yet, leave it in a comment below and I will attempt to address it in a future video. On Instagram, Vanishing Point asked a question about how could someone engage in self-harm when they have a happy life, essentially. And this is a great question, and it's one that comes up quite a lot. And not just about self-harm, but about things like depression as well. Like, how can she be depressed? She has a great life. Um, and there are three things to bear in mind here, I guess. One is that it's not about your perception of that person's great life, it's about their perception. And if, to them, it doesn't feel great, it doesn't matter what you think about it looking in. You don't know the story of that person. The other is that everything might be rosy right now, but perhaps they've experienced past trauma um, that might be impacting on their ability to cope now. So they might have sort of post-traumatic stress disorder or, or similar. Thirdly, even if someone has an absolutely perfect ideal life, sometimes biological factors might mean that they have overwhelmingly difficult thoughts uh, and feelings going on. So depression can have a biological component. It's not always in response to something happening or difficulty and adversity in your life. That can be a trigger. Sometimes it's just about biology and it, it, it doesn't make it any less valid. So yeah, someone might self-harm and you might not be able to understand why. The best thing you can do to try and understand is to stop asking the question inside your head and ask it out loud. And don't do it, you know, judgmentally. Well, what, why are you self-harming? Why would you do that? But more actually inquisitively, um, I really want to be able to understand this better so that I can support you. I want to be a better friend, teacher, parent, whatever. Actually open yourself to listening non-judgmentally and allow that person to begin to tell their story. They might not be able to do it right away. They might not ever be able to do it, but actually stopping, listening, caring without judgment is one of the most incredibly supportive things that you can do for someone.